Hello again and welcome back to my kitchen table where we will continue with our embroidery with the knot family this time. Today I'll be using the number five quilt crochet or crochet um, thread or I'll be using six strands of uh, an embroidery cotton. Today I'm going to use um, a milliner's needle, which is a very fine um, needle with the shaft is the same size as the eye and it's great for working with um, knots. And if you can't get your um, hands on a milliner needle, a fine darning needle will do the same thing. And it has a big eye and a long shaft and a point. So, um, we'll start today with the French knot. So it's marked on the on the fabric with just a dot um, where you want to have your, your French knot. So you bring your thread through to, from the back, lay your work on the table and bring your needle to the thread and wrap one, two, three times over. Now you put your needle down a thread away, run the knot down the needle and hold. And whatever size the knot is at the end of the needle is the size the knot is going to be at the finish. And if you don't run your knot down when you're, uh, before you pull the needle through, you won't get consistent knot, it'll be loose. So again you pull put your needle to the to the thread wrap once twice three times around down a thread away and the important thing is to run your knot down the needle and hold push your needle through and if you're finding difficulty pulling the needle through just turn your needle so these are a three wrap French knot. So once again, have about an inch of thread, wrap your needle three times clockwise, come down a thread away and pull the knot down the needle and hold your knot with your thumb. Now as I say, just twist the needle and it'll come out fine. Now, I just want to show you the difference between the sizes of the knots. At this time, I'm going to do two wraps once, twice around. Again, come a thread away and pull through. Again careful not to catch the fabric in at the back. Have a little bit of a, a knot. So twice around the needle, down the thread away. If you don't go a thread away, what will happen is your knot will pull through to the back. Now I'm just letting the twist come out of my thread. And you don't need your knot on the reverse side. So twice around, down and pull through. Now this time I'm going to do just one wrap around the needle. So it depends on what you're doing. Um, you can use your French knots in a circle and it can be a little flower. Put a yellow dot in, or a yellow French knot in the middle of blue and it becomes a French uh, forget-me-knot. Sorry, just once, one wrap around the needle. And pull through. And again, one wrap. And this is just to show you the difference in the size of the French knots. So 
Now you can see the three wraps is quite a big, loose, uh, high knot. The two wraps are a little flatter and the one wrap is smaller again. So they're the variations you can get on a French knot. Now, the next one I'm going to show you is the pistol stitch. And the pistol can be used uh, as pistols from a flower, ideal for a fuchsia, a fuchsia. Now, what it, it is, is a French knot on a leg where we came down directly uh, beyond uh, a thread away. This time we're going to do a long thread. And I've done two wraps around the needle, hold and pull through. Now, what you need to try and do is have your knot on the far or the loop of the thread on the far side of the knot, and it helps to keep your your uh, straight leg down. Now, what I was saying to you about a fuchsia, if you were doing it as a fuchsia, you would do one long leg, two wraps, and a little shorter leg. pull through and try and get your, your loop on the far side of the knot and it holds it down in place. So stamens or pistols would always be coming from the same spot but they're spread out slightly. And they would, you could use three or five or seven, depending on what you're doing. So there's your elongated French knot or a pistol stitch. It's a French knot on the end of a, a long stitch. Now the other knot uh, in the family is a colonial knot. And a lot of people have a dread of doing a colonial knot. They just find it difficult to do, but it really isn't if you follow these steps. Again, I'm placing my work on the table. And this time I'm taking my needle up from the left-hand side and turning the needle. Now, by turning the needle, you're helping to hold the thread on the needle and have a bit of control. And then I'm going to wrap the needle around the tip or the thread around the tip of the needle and come in a thread away. Again, run your knot down the needle, hold and pull through. Now, this knot is used in candlewick embroidery and um, it's the usual thread or the usual knot that you use. So when you're doing the knot correct, you lift up the thread, turn the needle, hold and put the needle or the thread over the tip of the needle. And what you're actually doing is doing a figure of eight on the needle with your thread. Put your thread, your needle down a thread away, hold and pull through. So I'll do it again. Now, in the candlewick embroidery, you can use a French knot as well, but um, the preferred one is the colonial knot because it's a flatter knot. It's quite a big knot, but it's quite flat. So once again, hold your thread, needle to the left, turn the needle, thread over the top and go down. Pull the knot down, push the needle through. And there's your colonial knot. And that's it done in a tissue box holder where I have the flower outlined in colonial knots. 
uh, a few straight stitches uh, in each petal and some colonial knots in the center. I've worked the stem stitch on the outside of the leaves and on the stems in a number five pearl cotton. And these are little French knots that I've, I've worked on the top of the pattern. So that's uh, candlewick embroidery. Now the next stitch in the knot family is a bullion stitch. And this time it's worked on a straight line. So you come up at the top of the, the line, bring your needle into the base of the line and back out at the side of the stitch, trying not to pierce the thread. Now, the amount of fabric you pick up, you need to cover it with wraps. So we're going to do six or seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just test it to see if your wraps are equal to the amount of fabric that you've put up. But I'll just do one more. And that should be the, the correct amount. Push your needle through. Now I'm holding my wraps with my thumb and first finger and pulling the needle through. And the little divots won't come out for me now. So if you have difficulty pulling through, just tease your, your uh, knots down the needle. So you finish off by going down at the base of the line. And what, what it is, it's like a little sausage stitch. stitch. If you, um, aren't happy with the way your knots are, are uh, sitting, you can run your needle underneath and at the same time, pull the thread at the back and pull the thread there and the knots will sit down flat for you. So I'll do it again. Come up at the tip of the line, take an amount of thread, wrap the thread clockwise around the needle, raise the needle off the fabric four, five, six, seven times. Push the thread through or the needle through and pull. I'm actually using a chenille needle for this and the eye is a bit bigger. So um, a darning needle would be better. Thread down at the base of the stitch. And there's a nice flat bullion stitch. So I'll do it once more. Thread up, needle in at the bottom, come back up at the tip. And it's the thread that you have at the tip of the needle is what you're going to be wrapping around with. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, if you find that your needle isn't coming through, you might have your knots very tight on the needle. So just turn your needle in an anti-clockwise fashion and the knots will loosen up and it will come through easier. Now, as I say, hold the knots or the wraps until you've nearly got your thread through and then with your nail, just push the Pull the thread and push the wraps. And there's your bullion stitch. Your little sausage stitch. Now it's raised off the fabric. It can be used in a variety of, of ways. This is using stranded cotton here, three strands, and I've 10 wraps on the needle, taking up the same amount of fabric as 10 knots, wraps. Then with 20 wraps, I get a loop, taking the same amount of fabric. And with 30 knots, I get a bigger loop, taking the same amount of fabric. Now, if you want to make it into a small stitch, you only take about two or three strands of, of the fabric. 
and wrap 10 times around the needle and that gives you a small little bud effect. With 20 wraps, you get a bigger bud and with 30 wraps, you get an even bigger loop again. This one here is 50 wraps. I have it tied down, but that's the way it would be laid on top of a bud to give you the effect of a, a bud wrapping itself around ready to open. You can use the French or the bullion stitch as um, a rose, a bullion rose. And you start it off with two or three straight, small straight bullions, and then you do larger wraps and wrap it around the, the two until you come into a flower shape. Or you can use it um, in the, the 30 wraps as a rose. I've used it here for the lavender as well. And these are nine wraps using three strands. And the lily is nine wraps, 12 wraps, and 20 wraps. And a couple of little bullions at the bottom. So that's just to show you how you can use your, your knots. Now, in the first video I did, I did the stem stitch. And I just want to recap on the stem stitch again, using the bigger thread and bigger stitches so that you can see it um, properly. You start from left to right, you bring your thread up at the top of the line and take a stitch along the line back to your thread. Now hold the thread down below the line all the time. I always put my thumb on it and it just has it in the right position to do a stem stitch. Now you can see where your thread is coming out which is beyond to the left of the end of the stitch. And when you take your next stitch back to the previous stitch, you get the rope effect on the stem. Now, I told you um, in the first video, or I was showing you how to uh, whip a stem stitch. And uh, I said that there were two parts to the stitch. Now, if you put your needle under the previous stitch, you can see there's two parts to this, the stitch. And it has um, a shorter um, gap where the thread won't move. And I'll show you that now in just a second. I'll finish off the, the stem stitch. Now the stem stitch is a really versatile stitch. Very easy to do. Now I'll just finish off down here. I'm not quite to the end of the line but you get the, um, the idea. And to finish off, just put your needle down at the end of the last stitch and work your thread along a couple of stitches to finish off your thread. You can leave it like that, but I like to put just a tiny little loop in it and it stops the thread from coming out. Now I'm going to, to whip the, the stem using a lemon thread. Now you come up on the left hand side of the line and with the eye of the needle you go under the double part of the stitch, this part here. under the double part of the stitch. And if you run your needle, you'll know you're, you're picking up the double, the double si size of the, or the double part of the stitch. Um, and your whips then will be consistent. I want to stab myself. like so. 
how I'm holding it up at an angle and I can see it better when I'm putting the needle in. And then just one more at the end. And bring your needle down at the bottom. And there's your whipped stem stitch. So I hope that shows us a little bit more clo closely for you. Now, on the previous um, video, I did the chain stitch. And I just wanted to show you um, a piece that I did using the Lazy Daisy stitch. And what I did was I used um, a dish, small dish to get a circle and then a tumbler on the inside. And there's approximately an inch between each of the circles. And I filled it with um, Lazy Daisy stitches and French knots. Now, the only different stitch there is straight stitch. And I didn't show you that because it's literally up in the center, down on the outside up in the center, down the outside, and you keep working around in a, in a circle. And I got um, a different daisy. I put them, you might not see them as closely um, in white. I've used the same kind of family of color uh, for this, the lazy daisies. I have wine in a more fuchsia sh shape. I have some pink in it as well. And just, I added a bit of blue uh, just to uh, give a different texture or variety of colour uh, to the stitch. And I also said that um, at the end of the videos, on the next video, I'm going to do a little project with you. And it's using the stitches that we used already. The stem stitch, the lazy daisy stitch, the bullion stitch and the French knot. And I have a little B in there for a bit of interest using bullion and straight stitch. Thank you very much for joining with, with me again today. Um, until the next time, be safe and stay at home. Thank you. Bye.